All right, so let's do a little economics here. Now, as I said earlier, if you look at Lean and Six Sigma and all that stuff, they were designed to eliminate industrial era waste. And again, they have been extremely great at that, extremely great. Not quite so effective in eliminating the new wastes of the coordination era, right? Because they're blind to these things, as are all of our current financial measurements. So watch. What are the wastes? We call these the silent killers. Right? And I suggest to you that the waste of today is more insidious than the waste of yesterday because unlike the waste of yesterday, you can't see any of these things. But if I go into an organization and I can walk around for about 20 minutes and give you a little mood reading, right? if an organization is deeply in the grips of cynicism, distrust, resentment, and resignation, what do you think is going to happen to productivity? It's going to go down the toilet. And the HR people don't like me when I say this. You can do all the happy, clappy, motivational work you want, but if you don't get at that underlying mood, it's not going to make any difference. Right? Lack of listening. Right? As you well know, I don't mean hearing. Everybody can hear. But listening is a real life competence that people can develop. We don't teach this in organizations. And so we have constantly people talking over each other, around each other. We're talking a lot, saying nothing, but not really coordinating. Yes? We've got a lot of bureaucratic work styles. We've talked enough about that. We spend way too much time worshiping information and analysis. We somehow send, tend to think that because you guys have got charts and graphs, that must mean that you know, they've got the truth. No, they don't. All of that tends to suppress innovation. Right? What's the biggest enemy of innovation in modern companies? Management. No, really. Management is the biggest enemy of innovation. Think about it. What is industrial era management designed to do? Eliminate surprises, deviations, disruptions, produce control, order, stability, and predictability. What is innovation? None of those. Right? So despite all the talk about it, we're really lousy at consistently producing innovation because all of our management systems and thinking are actually designed to prevent it, despite all that we say to the contrary. In some big companies, they've figured this out. So what do they do? They'll put together what they used to call them skunk works. Right? We take some innovation lab. Right? Nike has a special room. It's not even as big as this room. I know this because they're a client. Right? It doesn't matter who you are. You can't get into that room unless the CEO, or unless you work there, or the CEO writes you a path. Otherwise, you do not get in there. They are immune from all of the normal practices and processes. Right? Look at most major companies. They've done the same thing. We figured out that we're our own worst enemy here. And we've got to set up some sort of place where we can have people be a little more free to think and make mistakes, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And then you produce with all that, it sounds strange, but modern indentured servitude. It sounds very heavy, and to a certain extent it is. If you look at what goes on, you listen to the way people talk about their lives, their sense of joy and satisfaction and fulfillment most often does not come from work. And yet, where do you spend most of your time? Work. But listen to the way we all talk. Oh, yes, I can hardly wait for Friday, because then my real life begins, right? My 72-hour real life, right? We're going to have some real fun after work, right? Et cetera, et cetera. It's, we, we, we've so become this that it, we, we, we've, we've forgotten that that's probably not normal or healthy. Right? I mean, really, where do you spend most of your time? At work. So wouldn't you want that to be a source of satisfaction and fulfillment and pride? I would think. Right? But we're in, we're in our own way about it. Now, let me show you, and this is the conversation I had with the finance guys, where they end up not liking me. Because I show them things that they're blind to. All right, so this is uh, uh, numbers that we put together for one of our clients who I won't name. Let's just say they're in Oregon and they make shoes and sportswear. 
market. So 35,000 employees. Out of that, I'm generously saying they've got 20,000 what we call coordination workers, people like you. So this is, takes away the retail employees, the clerical people, so forth. So we've got 20,000 coordination workers. Right? The average fully burdened salary for those folks is $90,000. Right? So do the math, 20,000 times 90,000, that's a billion, 800 million they're spending every year on their coordination workers. Tracking so far? Okay, here we go. Now, according to Gartner, McKinsey, a couple other research groups, the average American worker fulfills what he or she says they're going to do, which is to say on time, as scoped, on budget, 30 to 60 percent of the time. And the number's been going down because of all the ridiculous cost cutting in the last few years. So I am being at the same time generous and conservative and giving them 60%, the highest rate that the statisticians would allow us. Now, I take 60% of a billion, 800 million, that's a billion, 80 million. What that means is they're spending a billion, 80 million and getting exactly what we paid for. The math also unfortunately tells us they're spending 720 million and not getting what they paid for. Now we can't call that all waste, because they're doing something, they're just not doing what they would promised or said they were going to do. Now I asked 10 CFOs, what's the opportunity cost of that $720 million? Not shockingly, I got 10 different answers. They range from 1x to 10x. I am a conservative guy, so I took a half x. Add those two together, there's a billion dollars a year it's leaking out of that company, and there is no financial system that can see it, let alone do anything about it. A billion dollars a year, and we're blind to it. Here's the exact same math on a smaller company, 2,000 people. Okay? In their case, there's $81 million a year leaking out the doors. What could any of us do with, if we could just recoup some or all of that? 